Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Digital Gate Studios production. Still on the webcam, me and my boy Jacob in the house. How's it going? Doing all right, man. How are you? Good. I'm good. We uh, it's just the two of us. Yeah. Everyone we're... else, yeah. everyone else either has a life That's or uh, they're too good for us these days. Along those lines, yeah. Yeah. But uh, oh, you, we got know... as long as we have each other. Yeah, that's what really matters. We got some stuff to talk about. Sorry, everyone, my webcam's not the best, but uh... yeah, check out the ah. This is a uh, for those of you, I mean, the loyal fans know that Jesse is like the the mastermind behind this whole operation, and Jesse's like, I've got an extra webcam if you want to upgrade. So that's kind of where we're at. So the webcam I've got, we'll get the the nice microphone next, and then. I don't even know what from there. Well, hopefully we're going to be getting back into a studio in the near future as well. Yeah. But in general, I also need a webcam for, you know, all these online tournaments we do. But speaking yeah. of online tournaments, recently there was a online regional that I think we should talk about briefly. So, well, I don't Sure. Care. Yeah. We Tell can us a little uh, bit about how much of a this... not surprise this was. Yeah, the, uh before we talk about the tournament specifically, uh I was talking with we were at locals and people were like, "Oh, when when's the next one?" And I was like, "The next one's in EX6, I'm pretty sure." There's just like no tournaments this format, uh, which is pretty it, sad. It it, it kind of ends up being that way often after like was it like every third set they get, do an EX set, and it's so quickly yeah. after that. I mean, is there really a point to regionals in between? Yeah, but uh, then the the counterpoint, of course, is. The decks that are strong in BT16 will yeah. be strong basically until there's a ban and restricted I mean, list. E- EX, Japan is... EX sets are always either good support or like an extra deck or two. They never yeah. really shake up the meta completely. Yeah. So... And, and my my understanding is that the Demon Lord deck does perform quite well yeah. uh, uh, in Japan. I think we're going to um, see Demon Lord and definitely Lilith. I'll be playing that. Um, yes i I think that's really um, the only new decks well, no well so mastemon ace uh and then and then ragnalord ace right and, um you, and then you I think f- that's what's gonna bring mastemon back <sighs> they have a level five that plays mire for free is the, I was just look- is the new mire in this set or is that six the new mire is the secret rare okay. uh in e x six okay um and so the idea is if we're into both Mirays, and we hard play Structured at Garoman, uh, effect of the new Mire evolves into an angel, and then effect of the old Mire plays the other angel, and then the Garoman is end of turn DNA. So it's a five cost Mastemon from an empty board. <laughs> Seems pretty good. Uh, and so, so in my mind, that's pretty good. Um, it also has the Salomon from BT16 hmm. uh, that lets you Evo into a holy. What is got him on a holy animal or something like that? I'd have to from look trash. Up. So basically, you go into a got him on for two, start a main, and then you can do your effects from there. There's just a lot of ways to make Mastemon, um, uh, with the new support. Uh, and I also think that Mastemon is a deck that people really like. Oh, yeah. So I think they'll That's play it kind of regardless of if it's strong or not. Uh, and then Ragnalord, I'm gonna make work no matter what. <laughs> um, I know you are. Uh, I I love Ragnalord, and I think these cards are actually quite strong. I'm gonna be playing uh, a lot of that new Lilithmon, and you know what actually looks really fun? I can't remember uh, its name, but the yellow monks, the level fives that all uh, oh, oh yeah, that make each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna the cook the some cross that, yellow so. thing. Yeah. Um, but that being said, we do have this BT16 event where uh, I don't know if we'll have a graphic, but uh, we're looking at the Eggman events website and. Uh, Half of the top 16 was New Maimon. Surprise, surprise. Um, but yeah, so... <sighs> the thing about the New Maimon deck is... Uh, they really... They have Platinum New Maimon as, like, the icon for the deck. And it should be Ukomon. I mean, it's an Ukomon Rush deck. Uh, it, Especially it's just now. The deck that, it, it's the deck that takes the best advantage of Ukomon. Yeah. And uh, we didn't really understand how strong these cards were. Uh, having eight of them uh, until we started playing with it. Uh, so many decks that uh, can play these these eight Ukomons are so strong. I mean, one of them uh, kind of 
new pop up back into being a meta contender that we haven't seen in a while, but is kind of a fan favorite deck as well as one of the channel's favorites. And that's gonna be Blue Flare. Yeah. Uh, I've I was putting Nukos in that last set and trying to get it to work again. But I mean, seeing it top here and then looking at the list, just eight Ukos yeah. just really brings a lot of things like that yeah. onto the table. So I don't know if uh, we're going to have any uh, graphics up here, but we'll talk about the list. Uh, so the first thing we'll talk about is uh, Huang Zero's uh, Numemon, um, which I think is, I mean, if you are not scared of this deck, if you haven't looked at this deck list, you should be. Um, it really, because you have eight Ukomons, you're able to cut out all of the fat. So you have eight Ukomons, the Floodgate uh, level threes, uh, the normal Numemon lineup, although it is down on the uh, the RB1, because you don't need as many Numemons because of how much consistency those BT16 Ukos get. And then here's the horrifying thing, Jacob. He X4, EX5 Edamon into Valkyrie Ace uh, is just so brutal for so many decks. That Valk Ace so, is very strong. Yeah, so like I mean it's it's a ruin mode effect on an ace. Well, and the other thing is so you get it's there are instances where it's actually better than a ruin mode. So for example, Mirage Galgamon uh is one of the decks that was strong because Numemon was strong. Um Numemon is a very strong draw engine, all of their stuff is on deletion to effect. So a bounce and something that takes advantage of cards in your opponent's hand, uh, Mirage, duh. Yep. So let's say they go into an early Mirage um, and do some stuff. They hard play Edimon for seven. They minus 3k to the Mirage. Then the Mirage has to attack. You attack. You can't do any bounce effects because you have to attack and uh, whatever. You swing. They go into Valkyrie Ace. Now it's minus eight. So even if it had DP buffs from the BT13 line, uh, a, on that first check in security, a card removed, delete an 8K. Yeah, that's uh, so really good. The strength of Numemon is it creates a wide board and uses Monzai X to minus things out. But once you won the board, uh, Numemon had a hard time recovering. Um, and Metal uh, uh, and... EX5 Edamon into Valkyrie Ace is basically in almost every matchup an instant board wipe uh, into into have a level six uh, on your board. Um, so uh, this is uh, basically perfect proof of uh, let's do something about this deck um, because I th I think you could take this deck to BT20 and succeed. <laughs> uh, I I think it's completely ridiculous. You got anything to say about these little snot boogers killing you? I mean, every time I play against one of these and like these online tournaments, it's just like, bro. I mean, lately I've been playing a lot of Luga in these events, so it's like I got to race them, get ahead right. before they overwhelm me on the board. And it's like sometimes it's they're just, it's so consistent so fast. Yeah. Nume, Nume is going to be top deck for, for a little bit until... Until they do something about it. I mean... In theory, right, between, like, Ruin Mode and Death X, you can clear a board, but they have so many on deletions to recur it that it's just... Yeah. Like, they yeah. steal your turn while you're dealing with the board. I mean, Crimson Blaze has to answer most of it, right? But at the same time, you only play... The, the 7k time. level 5 is pretty problematic. No, I, I agree, I agree, but... So, we'll talk about second place, Yellow Vax, uh, another deck that is uh, quite strong. Um... One thing that I want to mention about this deck that I didn't really understand until I played versus it is I wasn't really understanding why they were playing the uh, BT15 Nyaroman as the egg. So it's a yellow egg that's when attacking, trash uh, top or bottom of security to gain a memory. Um, and I didn't understand it because they weren't playing too many Angewoman Ace or like the, uh, the basically the Angewoman line that benefits from uh, losing security. Uh, well, and then I was playing against that, that option, though, right? No, they're not even playing it. Oh, I can't, so I can't here's, pull up the list, but so here's what they're playing: Magnamon X Antibody, duh. Good card. So 
one of the if you do not have a oh BT, it triggers the magnet just yes you swing oh, like security oh, then you attack that. them 15k unsuspended uh and immune from effects so part of the scary part of this deck is that first swing with magna x because it is 12k unless you're on top of the starter deck rapid mod then you're 13k um but if you have the Nyaromon, you're always swinging at at least 15k with immunity uh which is pretty brutal um other than that this list is uh this list is basically how the deck lo deck looks these days uh with the playset of each rapid mon people are teching in the gold vidramon as their uh other armor form level 4 uh pretty good versus the new Maimon matchup um and then a little bit of offense with the fire rocket and final zubagon punch uh, and then anti Numemon technology with the Digimon Emperor. Um, but other than that, this is basically how Yellow Vaccine looks. Digimon Emperor is such a good card, especially as we're getting more Rukos. It was already yeah. gaining popularity. Yes. I was playing like against one the other day. There was one sitting there, and I have my BT16 Uko in the back, and he gives me two, and I'm like, two memory first search, still worth. Yeah, you know? right. And it's, it's like I was like. I was th I was talking with some people about um, about deck lists and things to do, and they were like, "Well, you basically should put two Digimon Emperor in every deck uh, until Ukomon is limited." Um, and I was like, "The thing about it is, I feel like trying to slow down Numemon is somewhat of a fool's errand because basically it's going to be fast no matter what, yep. uh, and it's not so much slowing them down that's important is like." Is like winning the board, um, which is easier said than done, of course. But yeah, it's it's either that or you raise them, which is not always not, the best. Not easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you like, like, like in my experience playing Luga, if I God Hand and I can answer like the early turns, then mm -hmm. it's it's very winnable. Yeah, it's like there's a point, there's a breaking point where it's like I'm clearly just a turn behind, and yeah, so. We'll talk about uh, that third place blue flare. Uh, I know yeah. you were you were pretty interested in this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this another is deck, kind of crazy though. Yeah. The, so the crazy thing about this list uh, is not eight Ukoman. Uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, the crazy thing about this list to me is playing seven tamers called Kiriha. Or uh, if I'm saying five, five tamers yeah, called Kiriha, and then two, two three Louis. setters and three of the the dual tamers. Yeah, and two which uh, this basically speaks to the uh, consistency that Ukoman provides, um, where it's like, okay, we're gaining. Normally, you're super reliant on that blazing memory boost, uh, and you want that blazing memory boost to be a five cost play a setter, draw two cards. Gain two memory next turn. Yeah, and it still has uh, that as a viable turn one, but but uh, it also one. because of these because of these Ukomans, uh, the memory gain off the promo and the mm. search off of the new one, uh, it feels pretty good to go into them and then play the tamer. It doesn't. It's not yeah, like and, we're really banking on that blazing memory. And as we tamer. talked about before, Ukomon as your opening rookies, which is going to happen most of the time with it being eight, you're not going to be able to turn one. You're, you're blazing. Boost. Right. Unless yeah. it's a mirror match and they turn one theirs. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, uh, the Gaussmon to set up the Zudomon ace, uh, I think is incredibly strong. So like, ah, Greymon, 4K, whatever, I can deal with it easily. Yeah, and their uh, on plays on the fours bounced. are really good. Yeah. And then, even more dastardly, Vikemon ace. So you Ooh. swing with Metal Greymon, either two checks jamming or swing on suspense swing. The entire board is stunned. Uh, they're completely doomed, uh, but they promote up from the raising. It's only an 8k all turns. Fine, I will swing over it and deal with it. Or I will go for game in some instance. You'll swing, D Digivolve 2, everything with one source can't be suspended. What, very, very good. What, what gets me about this guy's ratios is, isn't it? It's three Zudos, two Vikemons. That's right, yeah. Man, how often is he sticking fours? It's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but well, they're both very strong cards, very good inclusions. He's probably hard playing the Zudo Aces, honestly. 
Yeah, yeah or like yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, and then and then uh, a pair of removal cards with the full moon meteor impact and the full metal blaze uh, is a card that Jesse and I have talked about quite a lot because in these wide formats it's quite strong. Bottom deck a platinum Numemon and bounce to Numemons uh, for yeah. a cost of eight is not so bad. Um, but Blue Flare, a deck that will always succeed uh, in wide formats. Yeah, and it's it's a deck that, I mean, Jeff on the channel, you know, he brought this, oh. uh, one of those regionals He's... early on. He loves this deck, and he swears up and down the only thing it's ever lost to is itself. <laughs> which, I don't know if those are the exact words I use, but sometimes you feel that. But it also Ukamon's, loses to... Well, yeah. It has, it has its yeah, bad no, it, Every deck does. But mm. Ukamon helps its consistency as well as yes. any other deck so much. And in this deck, you really don't care because of the way... This is this is a prime example of what can really abuse Ukomons, in my mind, is decks that don't digivolve to level 4. Because yeah. this deck, you want to push out your rookie, get your value, and you know either swing with it or let it sit in search if it's one of these Ukos, and then you just hard play your 5s. You know? Yeah. I mean, like the only good. times you would really use your 4s before... Is to play them for effect or play them off of the Gauss Mondeletion, and that's those are still both really good routes. But you yeah. never did evolve in Blue Flare into level four. Sure. And then uh, so, the next five places are all more Numa months. Yeah. So fourth, <laughs> fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth are all Numa months. The last list, I want, I'm not going to talk about Mirage Galgamon. You guys all know how to build Mirage. The only thing that changes is BT13 Galmon comes out or Galgamon and BT sixteen Galgamon goes in. So now we have more memory gain and searchable tribal jamming. So that's fucking that's great. But uh last deck I want to talk about is uh a deck that I am affectionately referring to as Magna Force. Um so this is uh O Force Magnamon armors. I don't know what I'd even call it. <laughs> um but uh uh, for those of you who are looking at this and list list and thinking, "Damn, that looks pretty familiar," uh, this is the same Old Force player who won the last Ultimate Cup of BT uh, 15. Uh, so he's basically, you know, an Old Force uh, one trick, an Old Force savant. Uh, and so the only thing that changed here is we took out Vidraman, the BT uh, 11 sort of tried and true Vidraman. Replaced it with gold in Vidraman, uh, for obviously good into the Numeman matchup, uh, as well as uh, sets up for that uh, for the Magnus. that Magnamon ex antibody because it's a Vidraman uh, and it's an armor form, right? Yeah, and it's an armor form. That's right. Makes a lot of uh, sense to me. And then uh, the only uh, other noteworthy inclusion is the four cost uh, Davis Ken. Uh, so the reason that this is good is you can play out your V-Mon Searcher for free, uh, theoretically get it back at the end of your opponent's turn. Uh, you can get that one memory when you evolve uh, into your level 4s or into the Magnamon X. Um, uh, and then if you spit out a V-Mon, one of the other V-Mons that doesn't have the on-play search, uh, if they hit that Structure Deck Magnamon in security, you always have a target for that. Uh, pretty interesting. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna side note for a second here. I don't know if you remember this deck I built, but it was um, Gabumon base mm -hmm. armors into Magna X with Gabu Bond package. So it was Gabu Bond and Ar <laughs> and Magna X in the same deck? Do you think Damn. we could bring this back with new Magna X? Would this be well? So well, here's so what I will don't say. Forget, end of turn, you 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 trash security to Evo into Gabu Bond too. Mm -hmm. Any any deck that has armor form into Magnamon X is probably pretty good. Uh, so it is worth thinking about. We, we might try uh, to bring this back, folks. Uh, that, was, that was a fun deck, and this was before trainings, so you had to pay the full three to Evo onto an, into a non, non Vmon into a Magna, and mm -hmm. is when we had one Magnamon. Yeah, right. And now we have... Three, Twelve. four? The three, yeah, three level fours. Mm -hmm. So uh, that'll wrap up the sort of uh, tournament recap there. Like I said, there was a bunch of Numemon. They're all slightly different. Uh, 
Uh, there's uh, a few mirages. Uh, they're all the same as they have been forever. Uh, there was a pure Magnamon X, not a vaccine Magnamon deck, um, which just replaces, you know, the yellow stuff with yeah. Vmons, and it's it's very similar. It's crazy uh, so how ba- like looking at the 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 top sixteen, right? There's half of it's new Mon, and we have yellow vaccine, which is going to be playing Magna X. We have Old Force playing Magna X. We have a Magna X deck, uh-huh. and then you know Mirage and Blue Flare. So right. It's so like, three three decks that are not Numemon or Magnamon X in some aspect. It's 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 um, yeah. It's very frightening. Very frightening. So get your hands on those secret rares, everyone. Get your hands on those secret rares because they are quite good. And they're not going anywhere, unfortunately. Well, we'll see. I didn't think they'd ban a secret rare, and then they hit a pock. So we'll see if they hit uh, uh, but, Magnamon. But the difference is that was broken in Japan long before we even read the card. This is true. This is true. Well, uh, that'll do it for that tournament. But Jacob, we had our own tournament. Yeah. For the local. fans watching, they know we're watching. Uh, we're recording actually on Thursday. Yeah. We're uh, you're watching it on Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, but yesterday was the local tournament, and so what? What happened at that local tournament, Jacob? So I showed up about couple hours early i was playing all these different decks that i you know i was playing luga and i was playing like my my big uko merva deck and i was trying to figure out what to play tonight and i was like i'm gonna play the the big uko merva mon deck it's it's fun and mm-hmm. then like five minutes before the event i'm like wait a minute wasn't there a blue flare that topped and i pulled blue flare out of my bag and mm-hmm. i'm like just jammed in some ukos i'm like anyone have a vike mon ace basil's like i have one <laughs> I had, here you go I had one. <laughs> so i i go into play you know i like pulled up this list i recently ran and i somewhat mirrored it not very well i tried the two louis wasn't a fan but i kept you know six tamers so i had three and three and Mm -hmm. then uh eight ukos which is insanely good and then um blue flare ended up winning me uh it was funny because finals was actually a blue flare mirror um my list which i it could use a little bit of improvements, but I kind of like it more than the list that topped, but obviously I didn't top an event with it. I don't know. Versus uh, my opponent who was playing almost card for card that list. I think it was like two cards off or something, mm-hmm. but it was, it was a lot of back and forth. It was really good, but yeah, blue flare is definitely coming back. Even at, even I agree. At, it's, it's going to be, we're going to see a lot more, I think in competitive scenes. Well, and I think, uh, something that the topping list didn't take advantage of was the Supreme Connection. Yeah, yep. I had uh, two in my list uh, yesterday. Supreme, Supreme Connection is very, very strong in that deck, especially and, with the uh, blue-black tamer. And Vikemon is black. And there Vikemon was one is time black. I could not get my blue-black tamer. I had two Supreme Connections in hand, and I Vikemon aced, and then the next turn I was like, wait, I have a black source. I have a black source. <laughs> they caught me off guard. Yeah, he, uh, good old Jacob, put the hands on me round one. And, this, uh, this is a good, good, good round though. I like. Yeah, so tell, I, tell me I've, what I've, you were playing, so I can I've, I've explain been, how I've been I working, deal with this. I've been working very hard on this uh, Shakoman deck. Um, Which a lot of people. It's one excited. of those decks where, uh, when I first started playing it, or when I first saw the cards, I was like, BT, uh, BT eight Shakoman is one of my favorite cards in the whole game. He's just T posing. <laughs> Blue, yellow, Jagras, Armadillo, and Angemon. It's so sick. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not very good, uh, which makes me sad. But uh, the BT-16 Shikoman is very good. I agree. Um, and not only that, the TK and, or the Cody and TK is very good. Uh, and not only that, Vikemon, Valkyriemon, and Mega Gargomon Ace are all very good. Uh, and it just so happens that we can have a level five that is immune to Digimon effects. That is a blocker, uh, uh, it, all in the same deck. So I've been toying around with this deck, kind of moving some stuff around, trying to make it as good as possible. Um, and I've been really enjoying it. It's a uh, it's a very strong deck in specific matchups. Um, it has some that are that are quite hard. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, so I ended up losing to Mr. Tournament winner, Blue Flare here. 
And you I ended definitely up, made me work for that. Just, just yeah, it was just it was like quick. game three. <laughs> so nail biter. Shikoma can't can't be affected. The reason that's important is I can't strip off your blocker inheritable because I had the metal yeah. that did that. Right. It's like okay, this is a waste. I can stun your other stuff, but I can't affect this. And then I swing, mm-hmm. and you go into an ace. Right. I, it literally gets to the point where I just have to save all my resources until I can attack four times, five times yes. in one turn, which eventually we got. And <laughs> you want to tell them how you lost from game three, or do you want me to tell them? So I'm, I'm a notorious. Uh, I'm notoriously. Uh, I think Blue Flare is a noob slayer um, because in BT10. Uh, specifically, if you didn't play out two Digimon, Blue Flare did nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're a little bit. It's still kind of true, but not. It's as less true. true than it used to be because they want you to have to, but they don't need you to have to. Well, they'll mostly just go into the uh, the EX4 Mailbird mm-hmm. and the Security Attack Greymon. Um, so it's basically just two checks jamming. And then Z Gray, and then whatever. Um, but at the time, I was like, oh, if I just make one Digimon, then the deck will do one swing at eight and then pass, you know? So I was like, damn, this deck's not very good. Um, but I just completely griefed it. I had, I had, I think, three or four security. I had a uh, shack that I ended up, uh, or. Yeah, I had I had a Shikoman. You went into I, ended up blo- I blocked. I believe. Yeah, I blocked. Or oh, yeah, I, you, I blocked. I pushed and then out countered, a rookie. You blocked uh, and that because I baited that block. And then I went into a metal gray and swung to bait out an ace, which you had. And then uh, it was. Right. I think it was the Valkyrie. So it, and then you know, checked once died. Yeah. Right. And then, then then the next check uh, on his next thing was the. Uh, Advent of the Ancient Steel Angel, which I was like, oh, yay, play out Patamon. Uh, and then I had two Digimon, and then he went to Z Gray for zero, <laughs> swing, and then boost, Metal Gray, swing for game. And I was like, oh, Basil. I do it. Whoops, two Digimon. Um, <laughs> so that was pretty bad. It was a fun, uh, was a fun Then game. I ended up, it was uh, yeah, it was, it was good times. Uh, round two, I ended up beating the Dark Masters Mega Zoo deck. Um, no source Digimon versus Valkyrie Ace, uh, is ri- or uh, Vike. uh Vikemon Ace, very good. Uh, and then and I it's, lost it's again a, another hex to to Joe, who you have all seen on the second most recent episode of the podcast, the uh, co-owner of Wayward City Games, uh, on Tyrant Kabuterimon. So big single stack decks are the uh are the biggest weakness of uh, the Shikoman deck because you basically are quite good at dealing with small bodies, uh, but dealing with big bodies is pretty hard. Um, the way that I have chosen to out uh, big big bodies in the deck is Trident Arm. Did you evolve three and then make them attack start a main? It's a little bit on theme with the deck with the aces and the Shikoman. Um, but I, if I you go into Tyrant to and then... If you play out Tyrant and then play out Shivamon, and I can't play options, uh, it's just a complete Shivaman? disaster. You can play Shivamon. Yeah, Tyrant? Shiva people. It's an insect. She's an insect. I thought she was a shaman or something. Yeah, that's no, I like that. That's awesome. So that was pretty bad. So I finished on on an old one and two kick, but uh, I'm gonna refine that deck a little bit. I'm I'm. Very close to having it where I want it to be, and then we'll we'll get it filmed up and have it out there. But locals was good, good what times, fun, had by all. So yeah. we want to do. Uh, we've got a Q and A. Yep. Uh, but before we get into the one today, I do want to shout out uh, Gangsta Bob on Discord because we were talking about uh, color identity and uh, should we add a new color. Uh, and one thing that I was talking about was uh, how black is in kind of a weird spot. Um, and it just so happened that literally the spoil from Friday was uh, BT18 Wiseman, uh, which is on Plane Wind Digivolving Search 5 of either player's deck and rearrange them. 
And I was like, man, that is so funny because (laughs) that's exactly what I'm talking about with, you know, Hover SB and Vegemon and Betamon and and that whole line is sort of, you know. If we get enough of those cards, I mean, you're going to be able to just lock it in the game. So you just you, you evolve into this, you reveal the top five of your opponent's deck, you see, you know, five like megas, and they're still in like a level three in the raising, and you're like, Yeah, you can have them all. So I can I can <laughs> you know attest I mean? to that this if we get enough support for something like that of, you know, all right, you reveal five, I can put them back in anywhere. If we get enough of that to that you can like do it once a turn. You're going to be able to show your opponent out of the game. Yeah. And in Magic, there's a deck in Modern called Lantern Control. And so Lantern of Insight is both players play with the top card of their deck revealed. And then you just play a bunch of things that are like, okay, mill one card. Uh... So I look at what's on top of your deck. <laughs> and if I don't like it, mill it. Oh, mill one. Mill see one, you mill later. One. Oh, that card's useless. Keep yeah. It. You can draw that. Yeah, right. And the well, deck can get games. So this this I'm effect, saying. I think, it... it I would love to see more of this. The The only other direction I think Black can really go would be to just steal what One Piece has, and that's play cost reduction. And we do have that on the new Tank Dramon, uh, where it's yeah. like, if you're doing the thing your deck's supposed to do and meet certain conditions, reduce play costs, and then delete yeah. like a four cost or lower. And I think that'd be right. a decent thing to keep around too. And if those are the two things Black gets, I, I think those are both really it could be, good. It could be real too. stuff, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I mean, I would but hate for us to just we, copy paste One Piece, but they need something. They need an identity. Yes, yeah, it's true. But we have a we do have a question, and you kind of understand it a little bit better. Yeah, so why don't yeah. You, uh, I, I have a history in magic, and this question's coming from I'm terrible at pronouncing. Decide. I think it's decide, but D S Y D E. I'm going to say decide. And it's for anyone familiar yeah. with MTG's Power Nine, what would you consider to be Digimon's Power Nine? Uh, so the power nine in Magic are nine cards that are banned in every format except one, and that's Vintage, where they are restricted to one apiece. These cards are insanely powerful. Most of them are enablers. So, you know, Black Lotus, which you probably actually know what is, is one of them. The five of them are one of each color of zero-cost artifacts that just make mana for free. And then um, there's like a really cheap take an extra turn and then, you know, like draw cards stuff there. Uh-huh. None of them outright win games on their own, but they're such good generic enablers that any deck with them in it insane becomes just insanely quick and efficient. But uh-huh. these are called the power nine. They're from like the first couple sets of magic and um the question here is, what would you consider to be, you know, Digimon's closest equivalent or the nine most powerful cards? Okay. So I think one obvious answer would be Mega Digimon Fusion being the only banned card. <laughs> kind yeah. of a freebie right there. Okay. Well, so I don't, I don't, I don't play Magic, uh, so I don't understand. But hmm. hearing generic enablers. Yeah, uh, generic enablers. So, so that's why I wanted to, to give one or two examples real quick of like mm-hmm. ideas. Mega Digimon Fusion, HPD could argue. Right, so go on this. So that's what I was, th- was going to say. HPD, uh, mm-hmm. Calling. Okay. Yep. I agree. Uh, Ice Wall. Yep. Uh, I'm looking at the Phantom Restricted list right now. <laughs> that's honestly a good uh, place to start for this. Um, you could make the argument for reinforcing, but I don't know if that's yeah, on the same level. Uh, reinforcing it's... memory boost, delay gain three, but. I, I would hate to put Ukomon this. on our power nine. I mean, the, the, <laughs> the, sad, the sad truth <laughs> is, I think some of the cards that would go on this list aren't banned and restricted. I think yes. Gravity Crush. Well, I, I was also going to say Death X. Uh, Death X for sure. That card's pseudo self restricted to the point where like people really only play one or two. Yeah. In a format you could play four. But it's. It's. I think it is the card. It's either that or Ukomon is in the card that's in the most okay. variety of decks. So I agree with all the ones we've said so far, which was what HPD calling Ice Wall. Is that all we have so far? HPD calling Ice Wall, Death X, Ukomon. We'll just oh, say Ukomon. It's gotta be well, those two cards. So 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 the Ukomon's a great enabler. Death X, I don't think is an enabler itself. It is a kind of a board wipe. 
Yeah, so it, it depends. Are we trying to just say, here's the nine most powerful cards? Or are we saying, here's the nine most uh, powerful enablers that allow decks to do what they do? Right. Well, you, would, that, that's what, you wouldn't say, like, uh, like Shoutmon Cross 4 is an enabler. Really. It depends it's how we're interpreting the question, really. Well, the, the thing with Shoutmon is it's not one generically good card. It right. is the it's best card in its deck. One. Right. Right. And a lot of power nine are very generic enablers, like I mentioned. Oh maybe 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 Eismon scatter mode then. I, I would I would agree with Eismon scatter mode. I mean Eismon draw three pitch scatter. two is huge. Um Yeah, this is Oh this is Oh an- pitch analog pitch. youth. I you know, I, I can't disagree with that. Gain memory That's pretty generic card advantage. But you're not playing it in a lot of decks. It's it's really this is this is obviously like a hard question to answer. We're comparing apples yeah. and oranges here. But well, is uh, is is magic the same way where you have like a color deck? So you can play any color in your deck, um, but in order to cast a spell that's red, you need so so every spell has a mana cost, and those costs are going to have different colors in them, and as well as sometimes just generic. So a card could be like pay a red, a blue, and two of any color, for example, to 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 play this card. And then most of your mana comes from your lands or some other sources in some instances. So the power nine, half, five of the power nine are literally just zero cost artifact, half for a blue, half for a red, half for a green. Like mm-hmm. there's one of each color. Right. Right. Which is why like you could make the argument that like gra- wow, gravity. Wow, zero cost green. gain mana. Hmm. Permanent. Everything where, have I heard, where have I heard that before? Yeah. Gosh and, darn it. And we all know Basil has a. I'm getting, I'm getting worked up just thinking yeah. about it. So I this is why I'm saying like Gravity Crush and Blinding Ray could be on that same level of comparison because they are. Again, it's hard to say generic because you have to have sources of the color for options. But if you can play Gravity Crush and you're <laughs> you know? playing a way to utilize two memory to 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 win uh-huh. the game, then it's worth it, right? We've seen it with. You know, it's you know what's pretty interesting is. You might even say on this list it'd be like Structure Deck Ragnalord. Because so many decks are going out of their way to play it. That's pretty interesting. That, that card can just be a win button. It's <laughs> awesome. I love it. Ooh! BT8 Chimera, mm. too. The white uh, white Jogress. Yep. Mm-hmm. That could be good. Okay, right. okay. Nine cards. Let's lock it in. All right. HPD Hidden Calling. Poten- potential discovered. Yep. Calling from the Darkness. Yep. Ice Wall, we'll say Blinding Crush. Blinding Ray, Gravity Crush, I'm down. Uko. Newest Uko or both Ukos? We'll just say Uko. Okay. Uh, and then we'll say... Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Scatter Mode. K- scatter Mode? Chimera. I don't know if we put Analog Youth on this list, but we could. And then and I'll say Ragna. All right. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, that's, our, that's our power nine. If you, if you're in the comments, you've made it this far. Let us know what your power nine is, because uh, I don't know anything about magic. I'm sure that the the fans for sure do. And and I again, I definitely interpreted as this like the nine best enablers. Yeah, enablers. But it could just be the nine strongest cards nine in the best game. Card. Which is is slightly different, right? Because that then the yeah. list becomes Death X Ruin Mode, you know, <laughs> yeah. Ragnalord. So slightly different yeah. list. So uh Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with those those nine being and I mean those, the, the those, first those five are some or good six, cards. <laughs> first five or six are very easy and then from Yeah, the those are gimmies. Yeah. All right. And then we have one more question in the Q and A. Um so this one, I think, is actually a good one for you to answer. This is Lindell Rose, and it's saying some say playing against SecCon is mostly a knowledge check, as you've helped a lot of people with that knowledge of with your How to Beat SecCon tutorial. If you guys haven't seen that, check it out. It's on our channel. Never, never lose to SecCon again, mm-hmm. fans. Uh, so their, their question is, what deck other than SecCon absolutely requires the same form of knowledge check playing against it? So basically... Oh, wow. Like, you know, if you know how to beat Secon, you can beat Secon. If you have oh, no I'm idea sure. what you're doing, you're probably going to lose. What other decks are another example of if you don't know, you're going to lose? Mm. Two that come to mind right off the top of my head, Elf, yeah. Elfamon. I have absolutely <laughs> stolen so many games that I would <laughs> not win if my opponent has played against Belfamon yes. a decent number of times. So true. If my opponent 
asks how many cards are in my hand and I say seven, don't attack me because now I'm going to be at five. Now I can play my deck, right? And if I have three Keenans, I'm taking the turn the second you attack. This is the biggest knowledge check. I have stolen so many games. So true. Okay. The other one, another one, as we've already talked about, Blue Flare. Don't have two Digimon. It makes it so much harder. What what else you got? I think, uh, I actually do think, uh, one of the, uh, one of the biggest, uh, knowledge checks in the game, uh, is actually Yellow Vaccine. Um, I think a lot of people are very uh, frightened of Yellow Vaccine right now. I think for a good reason. Um, the deck is clearly extremely it strong. Uh, it does a lot. Um, but uh, one thing that the deck uh, struggles with is games where it does not open up Patamon. There it is. Um, and I think having the knowledge to extend really hard on the turn where they promote, say, Kudamon, Pillowmon, or or whatever other yellow rookie that they're playing, um, being able to extend hard those turns and then get to a Digimon that cannot be killed by Magna Angemon Ace, I think is really important. I think yellow also has the scariest uh, Ace play in the game. Mm-hmm. So I think they swing with the Rapidmon structure deck. It's effective 11k. It uh, resolves the check. Uh, and then they pass in some way. I think not. Uh, I think a lot of people who are new will think, "Oh, suspended Rapidmon. Who cares?" Uh, and then they'll get either Angewomon or Magna Anja Aced. Um, and if if you give that deck a free level five, uh, you you are screwed because then they're into either Venusmon, Rapid X, or Magna X, yeah. and it's really bad from there. Um, other, uh, other matchup checks, uh, I actually think that, um, one of the, one of the bigger matchup checks is actually, uh, hell, uh, Three Musketeers, Purple, oh, yeah, yeah. what's it called? Uh, yeah, Beelstar. Beelstar. That, I think yeah, Beelstar is... a little is, bit of a knowledge check there. Well. Beelstar is extremely intimidating for new players because it's like, oh, they're playing out a level six for free and playing and they play 14 kill spells. And what do I do? Um, I think once you realize that they have five security at the end of the day, uh, you can play a little bit uh, more smart around it. Um, Matt, knowledge check. Let me look at some of these decks. Can't uh, think I of think, any others. Off I the think top there, of my head. there an argument can be made for a little bit of, about Mirage Gal being a knowledge check. Yeah, not necessarily. Like everyone knows what the deck does now. It's a, it's a math. It's, it's a math problem. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it is, and it's like, how do I keep my hand the right size and all this other stuff? So it's, I because it's it's, 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 well. it's so unintuitive to hard play stuff that does not search. Um, but when you're playing has, against a deck that wants you to search. Yes, yes. Don't like, don't use what's... your don't use your things that and, add cards to your so, hand. Sometimes it's worth it. It's is, but you just have to ask yourself: Is this one card that I might get worth two more extra memory on top of what I'm already paying for it? Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's it it is a math problem. I've a- I've actually thought of one that is actually true, Shoot. and it's uh, Arrested German Superior Mode, oh, the Hunter's yep. deck. Absolutely. If if you. <laughs> Have your tamers and don't play them, or else you lose your Digimon. That's pretty hard to learn. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's I don't I can't think of anything else. I think. I yeah, think I think Digimon's in a in a spot where the decks that are strong, uh, it's pretty clear why they're strong. Yeah. Um. And I, I don't so think much. there are very many decks that win just because your opponent doesn't. It's understand like gotcha. Your game <laughs> you know. And like like I said, I. Elf will do that sometimes, and the deck can yeah. still win even if your opponent knows everything you're doing. But yeah. the the sheer number of people who haven't played against Belfamon until they play me in a regionals, yes. and then they just go, "Okay, I attack," and I go, "Okay, it's my turn." Yeah, right. Is it's and your thing dies. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and your board's gone. Yeah, um, it, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 in my opinion, Belfamon is the biggest example outside of Seccon. Yeah, that's up there. Thanks for the questions, y'all. Yeah, those are some good questions. Keep them coming. We're, yeah. We'd love to answer more. <laughs> well, you got you got you got a card of the week, my boy. Uh, you go first. Okay, I'll go first. Um, so let's talk about Armadillo Mon. 
You guys, there are three playable armadillo mons in this game. There's the new one, the BT-16, which is quite good. There is the promo, which is uh, the movie card, uh, search three and grab two. Uh, and then there's the the BT-8 armadillo mon, which is search four and grab a two-color yellow. Outside of that, there is one armadillo mon besides that, and it's a 4K three to play oh, yeah. armadillo mon. And there's a blue one too, as... isn't there? And there are two drop blue one. Ooh, there might be. I know that there's vanillas besides this, which vanillas We're on the rookie side. Days, I think we have to have a really good reason to play a vanilla if we're playing a vanilla. That being said, uh. So basically, the strength of the Armadillo Mon Shikomon deck is your your Tamer doesn't just play out Armadillo Mons. It plays out Patamons. Uh, so my card of the week is actually the promo Patamon. Um, I haven't had this card. The movie promo? Yeah, the movie promo. Okay. Because uh, I haven't had this card until the Adventure Box came out. Because uh, they, they were the most expensive movie card for pretty much the whole time. They were like yeah. 30 to $40. The Adventure Box one's obviously a little bit cheaper. Uh, so I got my hands on a couple. And just that, grabbing a card out of security, I put it in the Armadillo Mon deck, obviously. Uh, and I also put it in the Yellow Vaccine deck, uh, which I've been working on. Uh, and it also specifies two colors or more. So you grab that Rapid X, or the Magna X, grab the Rapid Mon. Uh, in this deck, you can grab the Advent of the Ancient Steel, uh, angel the option you can also grab your tamer um there's a lot of versatility with that deck uh, or with that card uh and i've really been enjoying playing with it yeah and you uh, we're getting that premium bandai one here pretty soon i'll have a couple extra for you <laughs> <laughs> all right my card's gonna be a card that a couple months back i don't know if i'd ever even like consider playing in a deck not because uh a little bit of not really knowledge on the card lacking, and also because a lot of decks that I play wouldn't consider this. It's going to be mm-hmm. Supreme Connections. Um, this is probably most likely been a card of the week, at least. This was my card Chastity. of the week at the, at the beginning yeah. of BT15. Probably for Machine, I'm card. guessing. But this yeah. card's going in two decks that I either have been playing or I'm picking up. Obviously, the first one's Blue Flare. It's not in this list that most recently topped, but I think it's a very solid inclusion in the deck. The security effect is very strong. It's 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 an activate main delay option, which yes. we're starting to see more of, but when compared to like a memory booster training, those just go to battle area. Yep. The other thing is it's a card in hand, a card in trash, which, um, you know, for the decks it's built for, like Machine, really strong. But even in Blue Flare, you can use the cards in your trash using the Tool Tamer. Yep, and by using uh, the delay effect, reduce the play cost by three. Now you get a, mach- <laughs> a metal Greymon for zero. The other deck that I'm That's putting this in is something that I've never really played before, but I'm kind of trying to work on now, and that's the D Brigade Digi Police stuff. Yes, uh, Commander Mon, High Commander Mon, Tank Mon. All of these are machines or cyborgs. So this is a free well, search. And and the level fives are on play and when digivolving. I was, we're getting there. Yes, yeah. Oh. Most of the things in the deck on play when digivolving. Playing anything in the deck for reduced cost is going to be very good. Mm-hmm. Pairing this with the new delay option that what's it called? Metropolitan Police Department Cyber Crime Division Investigation Unit Eleven Cyber Sleuth Crime Response Team. Yeah, that's I'm, that's I'm, probably pretty close at least. That was, that was close. Way better than I could do. Uh, I think pairing these together is going to be really good in this deck. And the other thing that I really like about Supreme Connections is by reducing the play cost of three of OG Dark Dramon, it's going to effectively cost zero because you're going to pay it for 10 yeah, and gain play it for 10, 10, and gain 10 and rush, which compared to paying three is already pretty cheap for what that card was. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to you know be a little better. So I'm putting Supreme Connection in these two decks and I'm seeing success. And uh, I think I think that card can go in a lot of different decks. So that's my card of the week. I agree. Because it's I love been it. inspiring me the most on deck building. I love that card. Well, y'all, that's it for this time. Uh, we'll get some more faces on next week for sure. We just have uh, people like, are all all across the yep. country right now. People are all Everyone's flying different, different places and hanging out with their families and all that kind of stuff. But it's fine. Basically, uh, I gotta cook. So 
That's right. If you've made it this far into the uh, podcast, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Um, give us a like, comment, and, and subscribe. Uh, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.